For this Death Guard Marine, I really wanted to capture the look of bear ceramite the Death Guard are known for, but the only issue is I don't actually know what color ceramite really is. Uh, certain depictions of it have it being either pure white to gray to kind of cream color. So for this, I guess I'll kind of just have to wing it. I started off by applying a pre-shade of thinned down abyssal blue over white primer. This was a kind of experimental step, and I had no idea how it will turn out, but my thinking was that the blue undertones would help give a pallid and sickly appearance to the model. I also plan on covering this model with numerous oils and enamel washes, so now that the blue color would be toned down quite a bit and not as obvious on the finished miniature. This blue is applied wherever I want my deepest shadows to be on the model, but I'm not super careful here, as I know I'll be reapplying lighter highlights to the model. Next, I rebuilt up my midtones with Scale 75 Nakar, which is a pretty cold off-white color that I think is perfect for a ceremony. I generally shoot paint that is pretty thin from my airbrush, which of course means it's more transparent, and because of this, I'm okay if my spray pattern overlaps some of the abyssal blue from the previous step. I actually prefer this, as it means that the two colors will blend together better, and the harsh blue shadows I put on before kind of start to fade away. Finally, for the last pre-weathering step of the armor, I do a couple of quick Xenophil spot highlights with Media Calmart Opaque White. This is focused only on the highest parts of the model where the light would be the brightest, and is used pretty sparingly. For the iconic shoulder pads, I first start off by applying two layers of Ardenon's Green. I apply two layers here because, as many of you might know, airbrush paints go on fairly thin actually, and you don't get full opacity with only a single layer, which leaves your colors looking kind of dull, lifeless, and boring. So by applying two or more layers of the same color over the same undercoat, you start to build up your opacity and get a nice vibrant color. To highlight this, I mix in a little bit of Sherwood Green into my still dirty paint cup and apply a Xenothal highlight on top of the shoulder pad where light would hit it. Finally, add a drop of Nakar into this paint mixture in my paint cup and apply just a quick spritz of this highest highlight on the very tops of the shoulder pads to kind of tie these into the rest of the model and to provide a little more contrast. Next up, I apply a layer of gloss varnish over the entire model, wait for that to dry, which I speed up by using a hair dryer, and then apply a couple of decals to the shoulder pads. Applying flat decals such as these to the curved shoulder pads is always kind of a challenging process, as parts of your decal might want to stick up and not suddenly flat. If this occurs, and using Microsoft doesn't get them to sink down, you can always use your X-Acto blade to cut small slits into your decals to force them to conform to the curved shoulder pad surface. After I'm happy with the decal placement and I've given them time to dry, I spray the model once more with gloss varnish and move on to the weathering step. Even though the armor at this point looks pretty good and has a nice smooth gradient from white to the darker shadows of blue, it doesn't quite read as that Death Guard iconic dirty white yet. So to do so, I cover the entire model in a pretty thick layer of streak and grime by Big Ammo, wait for that enamel wash to dry, and then gently wipe away all of the enamel wash over the model using a makeup remover dipped in a little bit of odorless mineral spirits. Unlike my Star Phantom Marine from a few weeks ago though, I don't want to be too judicious in removing all this enamel wash as I want to leave a thin layer over the entire model to provide some tinting to the white. And to do this, I just don't use as much pressure as I did on my Star Phantom and only remove a little bit of the streaking grime. It might take you a few tries to mimic this result, but I promise if you play around with how much pressure you use and how much mineral spirits you have on your makeup remover, you'll get to the same end result pretty quickly. I also use a long bristled brush moistened with mineral spirits here to add some streaks to the model by gently brushing vertically over areas that still have some streaking grime on them. This will cause the enamel paint to be reactivated. It'll be carried along with your brush stroke to add these slight vertical lines that look really good. After I'm happy with how much enamel wash I've removed, I spray the entire model with matte varnish to lock the enamels in and move on to chipping next. Next, I apply some sponged on chips to the armor using Granox Hide by Games Workshop. Now, I'm not gonna get into the logistics of how a raw ceramite armor plate such as the Death Guard is wearing would actually get chipped. It makes no real sense and ceramite shouldn't rust, but it looks cool in the models. So I'm gonna skip over that real world grounding for this one example. I also then go back over and do a layer of sponge chipping using pure white to add a little more contrast to the model and apply some more edge highlighting using the sponge technique. To continue the theme of making it look like rusty ceramite, which again makes no sense, I take some Kalahari orange 
and paint small dots of it into the center of the largest chips that I did before with iron oxide. I also thin this down a bit and paint on a few slight streaks running down from these rust spots to make it look like rain has deposited rust going down the marine's armor. For the final step of weathering at this stage, I used engine grime by make ammo to apply a few more targeted enamel washes to the recesses of the marine's armor to add a little more variation in color and to make it look a little dirtier. I wanted the metallic shoulder trim on this model to be kind of dingy and oxidized. So I start off with a layer of scale 75 decayed metal and follow that up with an overbrush of Victorian brass. Well, at least I think it's called an overbrush. I don't actually know what the technique is called I'm using here, but it's kind of a half dry brush, half layer that I'm running the edges of the brush perpendicular to the edges of the shoulder pad. So it kind of highlights, but also gets a little more paint than you would with a pure edge highlight. I next wash the entire trim with a layer of Lithonian camo shade is I feel like green tints really help to sell the worn look of the metal I'm going for. Plus the yellow of the metal goes really nicely, I think, with the green of the camo shade. The other cool thing about using the camo shade here is that if you get a little bit over the edge of the trim, it will actually act as a panel liner for the green shoulder pad and look pretty nice too. In order to really sell the oxidized look though of this, I next take some very thin down Caribbean blue. It is probably thinned down like five parts water to one part paint and apply this as a wash around all of the studs in the nooks and crannies of the shoulder pads. This paint will go on pretty brightly, but I promise you it will dry a little more subtle and give a nice vertigrous appearance to your model. I finish up the metallic trim by doing a slight edge highlight of Moonstone Alchemy over all of the outmost edges. This step helps to bring back some of the luster that we lost when we did the Athonian camo shade before, as well as helps cool down the tone of the metal which I think gives a more ominous appearance to the miniature. You can actually see that in this shot where the right hand shoulder pad has been highlighted while the left one hasn't. The left shoulder pad is a little more yellow, which is a warmer color, warmer tone, where the one with the highlights on it does look, I wanna say colder, which fits the character of the model better, I think. So after I finish highlighting the other shoulder pad, all that's really left to do is the Marines bolter. This is done first by painting on a layer of flat black and then gradually sponge shipping on petroleum gray, brown gray, and rainy gray in progressively smaller areas to get a stippled and worn appearance to the bolter. I then paint the metallic areas with a simple layer of heavy metal and then wash the entire thing with streaking grime. Now, the keen eye among you might notice I could have done this before and skipped doing two streaking grime steps, but I messed up the sequencing here as I didn't think of how to do the bolter until I got this far in the model. But yeah, if you wanna follow this approach, just do this step earlier. After the grime is dry, I wipe it away with my trusty foam makeup remover and then paint the Marine's eyes doing my traditional red glowing eye scheme. I forgot to hit record on this step though, but if you're curious on how I did the eyes, you can check out the video linked in the upper right hand corner for a full tutorial on them. And that's really it for the model. Normally in my outros, I'd have a little quip around why you should subscribe or I don't care or something, I don't know, sassy like that but it's currently 12.30 on the night before I'm releasing this, and I'm exhausted from recently moving, working a full-time job, and trying to get one of these videos out each week. So I'm gonna leave you with, hit some buttons, do some stuff, keep hobbying, and have a great one. Thanks for watching.